There's nothing necessarily new about Invisalign. The 25-year-old company was started by Stanford alum Zia Chisti and three of his classmates out of a garage in Menlo Park in the late 90s. Today, Invisalign makes over 750,000 customer retainers every day. CEO Joe Hogan says the company is the largest 3D printing business in the world. It took 10 years for Invisalign to reach 10 million customers. But something happened when we locked down. Our mouse and our wallets opened up. It expects to add some 2.5 million customers this year in the U.S. alone. We were all scared that our businesses were not going to make it through the pandemic. And honestly, I started doing more Invisalign than anything else in the practice. Here's how Invisalign changed the game for orthodontics on its way to becoming a $3.9 billion behemoth. This is Suddenly Obsessed. The idea for replacing metal wires and pulleys with clear plastic retainers dawned on Ziatisti after he had his adult braces removed. Chisti was given a retainer, the old kind with a plastic piece that sits on the roof of your mouth with metal wires that wrap around your teeth to hold his newly positioned teeth into place. That's when he realized that a series of retainers could be just as effective at adjusting teeth as braces. So he returned to Stanford along with three classmates and some support from the university and began writing a program to 3D print a series of clear plastic retainers that would ultimately become the Invisalign system, and he formed the company Align Tech. By 1998, that system was approved by the FDA and they were ready to hit the orthodontist circuit. Here's how they work. A dentist or orthodontist digitally maps the positions of your teeth. That information is fed through a series of algorithms to see what your teeth would look like if they were perfectly matched. An artificial intelligence-based program then reverse engineers the movements to get to that outcome. That information is sent to one of Invisalign's two massive manufacturing plants where they 3D print the molds and then vacuum form plastic on top of the mold which is what you actually use as a liner. Patients wear each retainer for at least 20 hours a day for two weeks, removing for eating and drinking colored beverages. A typical treatment takes between 20 and 30 retainers worn over the course of a year and costs from $3,000 to $5,000. The process was revolutionary, but there's only one problem. Orthodontists were not interested. Totally rejected, totally. You can't move teeth with plastic and you can't trust it. And, and we were learning along the way, right? We didn't come up 25 years ago and know how to do any set of teeth, right? There were just simple cases that we were doing, but we were rejected completely. And it's one of the reasons we have such a strong brand today is because we had to advertise directly to consumers in order to put pressure on uh, dentists and orthodontists is to use our product line by consumers asking for it. But sales continued to grow as the company educated more orthodontists about the product and customers began asking for them. A big reason for that was a $31 million advertising spree, which in a 2000 article the New York Times called the most aggressive consumer advertising plan the dental profession has ever seen. And that actually pales in comparison with the $250 million it spends a year on marketing and advertisements today. Chisti had a clever trick to catch the attention of VCs. At the end of his pitch, he'd pop out his clear retainer. He had been wearing Invisalign the whole time. It gets a good reaction, he told the New York Times in a 2000 article. That buzz attracted investors who pumped about $140 million into the company before it went public in 2001 with a valuation of $1 billion. But even though the company was spending heavily on marketing, customer growth came slowly. In 2002, Invisalign had about 80,000 patients. At the end of 2004, it had 175,000 patients. Well, I think you know, the first 10 years it took us to get to a million, a lot of it was just learning how to move teeth digitally. We could do adults in simple cases first, you know, where you have a big space between your two front teeth and you could close those and whatever. And gradually we learned how to rotate molars. We learned how to extrude and intrude teeth. Chisti left the company in 2003 after a dispute with his investors, but went on to form a similar company called OrthoClear in 2005. After a series of back and forth lawsuits, Align Tech ended up settling with OrthoClear for $20 million. Invisalign has undergone extreme ups and downs, especially in the early 2000s as it was spending heavily on outreach without seeing much in return. It had many brushes with death. It almost went out of business at least three distinct times of not having enough cash and overrunning its supply lines. It was close. We got ahead of our skis, right? We did, were incurring more costs than what our revenues were at that point in time and had overcommitted in certain areas and uh, did some trouble in the business. Invisalign currently spends about $250 million a year on research and development and can now offer services to patients as young as six years old. When you go back through history, teens were very difficult to do because often mixed dentition. 
is they would have teeth coming in at the same time they had adult teeth. And we couldn't program for that. And we've been able to do that now. But 60% of Invisalign's clients come from orthodontists and 40% from traditional dentists. About 75% of Invisalign's customers are adults. We probably moved from 2007 to 2012, being able to do 50% of the patients to 80 to 90% of the patients clinically. Hogan says over 1 million new customers will come from general dentistry this year. Hogan says that being able to offer teeth straightening services has been a boost to the bottom lines of both Invisalign and dentists. The stock has been on a rocket ship, but so has the business itself, which is to say it's growing exponentially. What's happening? Is it an international market story or is it a demographic story? It's both, Andrew, when you get down to it. We've expanded internationally significantly. Our growth internationally is 40 to 50 percent. The pandemic has actually been good for the teeth straightening business. Today we are going to be talking about how much my bottom teeth have straightened out. This was the before. You see how it's all types of crooked? And I found this wonderful picture of me mid-yawn. Well, this is my teeth now. They have improved a whole bunch, and I'm not even done with my treatment yet, but they already look so much better. While it took Invisalign 10 years to get to 10 million customers, it gained 2.5 million over the last year alone. It turns out a lot of people use the isolation of quarantine and perhaps their stimulus checks to straighten their teeth. In March 2020, order volume had dropped to 15% of what it was the year prior. But by October 2020, earnings were four times analyst projections. And by April 2021, the stock was up 400% from its bottom in March 2020. People were sitting in meetings all day long, and I was as well. I was always on Zoom talking to other colleagues and dentists out there. And all you do, you know you stare at yourself when you're on the screen. And so we found that so many patients were coming to us wanting to finally do something about it. I don't know if maybe the mask helped people because a lot of people were wearing masks and so they didn't care if they had stuff on their teeth or in their mouth. But competition is growing. In 2018, Smile Direct, a direct competitor with a cheaper price tag, received a $380 million cash infusion, pushing its valuation over $3 billion. The startup, founded in 2014, sells teeth aligners directly to consumers for $1,950. A 24-month payment plan comes to $2,386. Align Technology acquired a 17% stake in Smile Direct Club in 2016. As part of a patent infringement resolution, Align Technology acquired a 17% stake in Smile Direct Club in 2016. That agreement turned sour when Align Tech was accused of breaching a non-compete clause in the contract by opening 12 brick-and-mortar locations in an effort to grow its direct consumer business, which was too similar to Smile Direct Club's Smile Shops. A line was ordered to close the stores and the business relationship between the two companies is over. But Hogan says that there's a big gulf between upstarts like Smile Direct and Invisalign. Well, I mean, the game plan is, it's, it's not real sophisticated, okay, is, you know, we have 25 years of experience and just what you get caught, you know, how do you scale with 750,000 unique parts a day? We have the world's largest orthodontic database. So we should have the best algorithms to move teeth because we've seen more teeth than any other company in the world. We still have 800 patents out there that we can enforce at different times if we need to in different areas, but that's not the story. The story is a market size I've never seen about. It's an orthodontic revolution. By market size, Hogan means that there are hundreds of millions of people in the world who want straighter teeth and can afford to get them. 75% of the people out there have crooked teeth. And so there's 500 million people that can afford to have their teeth straightened that should have their teeth straightened.